comic fam big congrats to Elron cupboard we're gonna be sending you this wolverine and huckley variant it's a comic tom exclusive enjoy your hot 10 comic fam good to see you today we're back at the table to chat the hottest comics in the comic book market the comics that may define a generation of collectors hit the subscribe button we make this video every single week and i'm at the table with my co-host gem from gem and collectibles how you doing I'm doing great. What's going on, Comic Tom? What's up, Comic Fan? What's up to all the Geminis out there? This is a dope list. It's got some books that you would expect to see on a top 10 comics that will impact a generation. So I'm glad to see we have a little bit of a mix-up in the list this week. That's right. You know, at the start of pandemic, I feel like we saw a shift in collectors focusing on newsstands, later printings, and modern. And I'm starting to see a change to the market. I think it's going to begin here today at number 10 with some OG Bronze Age goodness. We got Hulk 181 coming on the list for the first time since we've been covering it. This is the king of Bronze Age books, the first full appearance of Wolverine, an iconic cover, a fan favorite character. When we started doing this video every week, I think we're six weeks in now, everybody said, hey, that list is nice, but where are the Hulk 181's at? Where are these other big keys? Well, here you go, number 10 this week, Hulk 181. This book has arrived. It's known simply by just its number it's so popular you don't really hear a whole lot of people chatting about the first full appearance of wolverine now you just hear 181 this is a blue chip book in the comic book community one that operates well regardless of market environment and you know what after making some big strides in 2018 becoming one of the biggest books to collect we saw it kind of get a little stagnant which is why it hasn't made the list until this point Let's take a look at the numbers. Back in 2018, the record was set at a price at $5,300. 2019, we saw it dip. It was hitting a low of $4,100. And this week, we see a near record made again, $5,275 for an 8.5. Clearly, speculation interest has started to rise. We all expect the X-Men to make their debut into the MCU, but at what point, we don't know. But what we did have is some, I don't know, wishful thinking that maybe Shia LaBeouf will get involved. I don't know how I feel about that one, Jem. Yeah, the rumor is that they're casting him as Iceman. I mean, it's cool to start getting casting rumors. It's cool to see this book on the list because I feel like you know it had its spike a year or so ago and then it kind of leveled off. But now, you know, we're getting close to these kind of announcements where we're going to see these books start circulating again. Number nine on this list. We got Star Wars Clone Wars number one. Dropping on the list. This was higher up last week. And it's not that it's dropping because they had low sales. Really what's happening here is what's happened to a lot of other big books that people started looking for the next best thing. The Star Wars Clone Wars issue one book that we've been talking about has been the Dark Horse 100 variant. That's not what's on the list this week. It's the regular cover. With that Dark Horse 100 becoming more and more scarce and prices going astronomical, people are looking for the A cover. There have been plenty of sales this week, including a 9.8 sale that sold for $1,500. Star Wars books have been heating up across the board, but those are starting to stabilize as collectors start to shift their focus to more established keys. We had Hulk 181 at number 10 on the list, and there's another big Bronze Age book that's coming in later in the list, so stay tuned. Number eight on this list, oh, we have Invincible Iron Man. Number nine, yeah, we're talking about that Turcot variant. This book has dropped significantly on this list. This was at number two last week, and what? It's at number eight, but again, this isn't your traditional list of like trending books moving up and down. No, this is because other comic books are rising up and because this book is so damn scarce. We were reporting on two copies that hit the market last week both nine eights one of them a signature series the first going for 1450 and the second setting that record at 1900 dollars now the big reason why this book is starting to become the major focus for speculators is coupling first with the fact that this is the first full appearance of riri williams in the iron man armor however we also know 
based off of the Key Collector analysis. You got to download Key Collector Comics, Comic Fam. Use that code TOM101 to unlock a free one-week subscription. And you help support the show. And you can keep up on all of this information that we utilize to make this video for you every single week. We found out that this wasn't a situation of ratio variants causing this fluctuation in market interest. This is not a Dejevic 1 in 25 situation. This is a cover B that was very difficult to order because they based the order on what stores were ordering two issues prior, and they would have put their orders in before Riri even made her first appearance in Cameo in issue seven, which lends credence to the spec as well as reason behind the crazy difference in CGC 9.8 copies when comparing cover A to cover B. We have a staggering 319 graded copies of cover A on the CGC census with a lonely 13 signature series of cover A, but when you compare it to 28 copies graded of cover B with one signature series that broke the record last week at 9.8. Yeah, it leads to reason why this book has become the spec of choice. All right, guys, number seven on the list is Batman Beyond Issue 1, talking about the newsstand edition. This is the first comic book appearance of Terry McGinnis. There has been no media news, no rumors, no casting. This book is just hot all on its own. We finally saw the coveted newsstand edition pop up on eBay. A CGC 9.6 quickly got scooped up for its full asking price of $1,200. But wait, there's more. We saw a ton of regular cover sales, including a 9.8 that sold for $1,550 via a private transaction. A regular 9.6 sold for $900, and a slew of ungraded, raw, regular editions listed for $375. Now that third print, that rarest, most scarce version, saw several near-mint sales in the $700 range. Me personally, I want to see Michael Keaton playing Bruce Wayne as the mentor to Terry McGinnis in the live action movies. DC, Warner Brothers, make it happen. Yo, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. And really what I think the community at large are all crossing their fingers about. Let's take a look at number six on the list because you know what, Jim? This doesn't happen often. Let's all give a big welcome to a comic book from the trending list. We have Vengeance issue number one, the first appearance of Miss America, also known as America Chavez. There was an alleged leaked audition tape for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness recently that's leading many individuals to spec on America Chavez. And for good reason. We don't have the Infinity Stones. How are we going to deal with all of these different dimensions and realities? Well, clearly, Doctor Strange is going to be answering that question, whether it be himself dealing with it or maybe getting some help of maybe a Avenger, a young Avenger, one that could travel between dimensions. It makes sense. We're talking about the next generation heroes to spec on, and this book has jumped up staggeringly. Let's take a look at the numbers. Last month, we were seeing 9.8s of this cover A hit the $250 mark on average. We are here to report three times that amount, landing Vengeance number one at number six with a staggering $725 sale. There were a slew of sales, and there was actually a 9.6 variant issue that hit a staggering $750, and heck, there was a monster sale, a giant sale, a near-mint newsstand edition that was traded in the private market for what is said to be upwards of $1,000. Yeah, it could be that people just don't want to have that FOMO. They don't want that fear of missing out on one of these next generation heroes that make it big. America Chavez could be one. And number five on the list is a big one, Kamala Khan. We're talking about her second cameo appearance, but her first cover appearance in Captain Marvel 17, the second printing variant. We've seen two huge CGC 9.8 sales this past week, $2,800 and $3,000, setting the new norm for this book, which was going for about $1,300 just a year ago. We also have a raw sale at $1,750. It shows how people are willing to invest to try to get that 9.8 and try to potentially double their money. And after all that drama with that all new Marvel Now point one issue that we talked about last week, collectors' focus has shifted back to this Captain Marvel 17 second print.
at the list of number four, Amazing Fantasy 15, the second volume, first appearance of Amadeus Cho hitting the list, securing his spot for the second week in a row. Last week, we were reporting very impressive highs at 9.8, reaching $600. He's back on the list this week because we have a staggering 9.8 sale, setting an all-new record high at $900. Now, if that seems impressive to you, I think the newsstand edition may be be considered a coveted addition eventually if Spec continues to focus on this next generation hero because we saw a raw copy hit a staggering $1,200. Since this character is now meeting the ranks of Riri and Miles and Gwen and Kamala, let's take a look at the print counts. Ultimate Fallout 4, the Dejevic variant, had a print count of 55,000. Edge of Spider-Verse number 2, 26,000. Vengeance number 1, 20,000. And Captain Marvel 14, same. 20,000. This comic book here, first appearance of Amadeus Cho, a lonely 14,000. Clearly people want to get in on this. Fear of missing out is at play big time. Tom, you want to talk about print run numbers? I have a huge Bronze Age book limited to about 3,000 copies. There were six different printings, counterfeit issues. We're talking about number three on the list, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. We told you we had another old school book on here and I'm so happy to see one of my favorite books on the list. First appearance of The Turtles, of Shredder, of Splinter. A book that arguably transcended past comics, probably bigger outside of comics than within, is now on this top 10 list. All right, guys, let's look at some numbers. We have a first print CGC 8.5 that sold for $15,500. Now, you can tell these first printings because they have an ad for gobbledygook on the inside cover, and they're identified on the Indica. Now, this book is a book unlike any other, except for maybe Action Comics number one, that has never gone down in price. Even Amazing Fantasy 15, the biggest blue chip Marvel key in existence, has gone down in value. But this one always goes up, regardless on if there's big hype media media rumors or castings and dude that's a record breaker that's an increase of five thousand dollars since the last one sold yeah the previous record was 9700 we also had a cgc 9.4 match the current record at seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a lonely 3,000 issues exist of this tmnt book it's one of my personal grails that i will own one day but you know what? Let's chat about another book that has some staggeringly low print counts. And I'm not just talking about the actual book, but the slab that it was in. Because it matters. Because at number two, Gem, it made the list. Young Avengers, issue one, the wizard first, CGC, 9.5 graded issue. It was only a matter of time. We were just waiting on someone to pull the trigger and buy one. We've been waiting for over a month for this copy to show up, and boy, did it not disappoint. We had two different crazy sales that happened. After 38 bids, Comic Fam, we have a staggering new record at $3,051. But that's not all, because there was a Buy It Now that sold for $2,800 of a copy of this book. Remember, that slab matters here, and the case was damaged. Jem, I wonder if CGC would even repair it. That's a good question, because this is not the new generation of labels, right? That's like the last generation. The things we think about. Oh, and for comparison's sake, the Wizard World exclusive of Young Avengers that was on the list last week of issue number one, that was hitting between the $600 and $900 marker for comparison. Yeah, with only 285 copies in existence, this was bound to happen. Before we jump into that number one book on the list, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell. Tom, what do we got for the giveaway? Oh, we got J. Scott Campbell goodness on deck. Spider-Gwen number one. It's gorgeous and it could be yours. Comment, like, and subscribe. And Gem Mint, let's chat about the hottest comic book in the world. Speaking of only a matter of time, it was only a matter of time till we got to number one and it was Ultimate Fallout 4 again. We're going to be talking about the newsstand version because it had some crazy sales this week and we have some context for you as well. We had a huge sale of $3,500 in a CGC 9.2. A 9.2. For an example, a 9.2 of the 1 out of 25 variant, the Jajevic variant, sold for $2,032. 
a 9.2 of the regular A cover sold for $328. So this newsstand is obviously the hottest, most sought after version of this book. Clearly pushing its way to the number one spot again on this list. And that's not all. With that 9.2 outperforming the Jajevic variant and the A cover, it makes you think what's going to happen with that 9.8 sale. We have the lone 9.8 newsstand which sold for 8100 which is now starting to look like a bargain because the 1 out of 25 Jajevic variant sold for $9,000 in 9.8. So it makes you think what can happen if we see a 9.8 newsstand hit the market now. Dude, I think it clears 10000 That's what I'm calling. Yeah, Tom, sounds like it. Comic fam, hit the subscribe, slap that like button, and, as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comic fam, we are in open enrollment for the September Mystery Mail Call, your way to support what we do, but also it gives us an excuse to make dope variants and send them to you every month. And this month, we're back on Thor. Thor issue seven is going to be lit. Did you read issue six? And we are going to be providing every single member with a Das Pastoras variant. This thing is a work of fine art. And every member gets one. Link in the description to join the community.